hello YouTube, it's Dave again. We're back up in the uh, chilly sewing room. Uh, it's still a work in progress and probably will be for the next couple months until it's warm enough that I can get the boy to come out here and help me work on it. Today I'd like to uh, go back and answer some questions that popped up on a video I did a couple years ago about a conversion of a 2012 to a treadle. My sister bought me a couple of 201s at an auction a few months ago and gave them to me for Christmas. Uh, which one to convert to a treadle was pretty easy to decide on because this one has completely baked electricals. Uh, I took a picture, I'll throw it up here. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be rewiring it no matter what and pulling it apart. So I decided, well, I'll just go ahead and convert this one to a treadle. Well, let's go ahead and get started on the conversion. The things you're going to need to convert a 201, uh, 2012, uh, obviously the potted motor comes off, the uh, hand wheel, the geared hand wheel, comes, balance wheel, the geared balance wheel comes off, you can't use those again. And so things you definitely need is a hand wheel. Uh, that you can run on a treadle. That is the minimum requirement. Once you have that, you, you're good. Uh, to make it look nice, uh, you can get the uh, belt guard. Uh, this one is an actual 201-1-3 uh, belt guard. I got it from Helen Howes. I'll throw her link up here for you to see. Uh, yeah, she actually has a, lots of stuff and her prices are more than reasonable even with international shipping uh, compared to eBay. I think on eBay, if you even found one of these, you know, the person probably wants $60, $70 for it. You know, Helen doesn't want that for hers. Really good prices. Uh, oh, another requirement you will need is treadle belt. You'll need a treadle. Uh, you'll need an awl to punch a hole in your treadle belt. And you'll need some screwdrivers. Uh, standard uh, smallish size screwdriver to get the stop motion clamp screw out. And then a big screwdriver for the uh, potted motor screws themselves. This is the one that I've used for years. Uh, I got this in England back in the 80s. Don't recommend it though. Uh, what I recommend that you use are Chapman Manufacturing, uh, the hollow ground bits from them. They're number 19 bit, uh, which is uh, 0.375 inches by... Uh, 0 0.050 is actually perfect, a perfect fit for the potted motor screws. And uh, you also need a little lightweight hammer. You don't want to get really aggressive uh, to break those screws free. You'll tap them a little bit as you're putting pressure on to turn. And there's a video, I'll put the link here, where it's discussed the proper way to do this to get the uh, screws to break free. Uh, if you're really unlucky like I was and somebody had put the screws in and like a moron used sewing oil as thread lubricant, the threads are going to be completely seized. And if that happens, you're going to need a drill and you're going to need a screw extractor. And also if you're on the unlucky side and you get a later 201, oh no, I'll show you this when we get the, the motor off, uh, you're going to have to tap your screw holes for your belt guard. So, and I'll show you that whenever we get there because this one doesn't have them and we're going to have to tap them. So, let's begin. Now, I've already had this one apart. I wanted to make sure that the video would go smooth, so I took it apart and These, your clamp stop motion and clutch, 
you are clutch washer, whatever, whatever it's called. You are going to need those for the other one, so set them with it. Uh, hand glue will, will come off real easy. Balance wheel. Thank you. Everyone I call it a hand wheel. It's actually a balance wheel. Okay, now you're going to have two screws in there. And I'm going to tilt this up and check and make sure the video is still catching it. First thing, those are the two screws that we're going to be taking out. You put your screwdriver bit in. And you give it some tension like you're starting to undo it. And then you just tap on it as you're giving it some pressure. And it will break it free. So the second one here, and I'll show you what it looks like. So yeah, that's the one I had to drill out. So, so if you worked on Singer Sun, you probably know the wiring diagram. Uh, if not, it's pretty simple. Uh, your light power goes to one and three. Uh, your pedal goes to one and two, which is are the plugs that are external. And then your motor goes to two and three. And we're taking the motor off, so we're going to unscrew two and three. So there's three, that's the motor, the light's still connected, screw him back down. And then on two, the only thing connected is the motor. And yeah, this is just for demonstration. For, I'm going to redo the wiring for the light too. Okay, so now the motor is completely free. Now, there we go. Do the balance well. Wash your back on. And that's basically all, I mean, that's all you need to do to get it converted. Uh, so, uh, one. This actually question gets asked a lot, which balance wheel can you use? Nine spoke balance wheel off of a 66, a 127, 1530 or later will work. There we go. Okay, so that's in. Tighten those down. It is in. And so the belt's on. Uh, threaded it up. I think everybody knows how to thread up a machine if you're watching this. Lights on. It's you know, one of my little pleasures in life. So let's see how good or bad of stitches this guy makes.
don't think these are missing stuff. But there it is. Okay, so we are going to have to do timing. It's getting chilly. I'm going to bed. So that little bit of a cut for you was uh, two days for me. If you've never done timing on a 201, uh, it's a bit of a pain. And I'll take some stills to show you where you have to uh, take screws out to get ready. And I'll also link to the uh, 201 uh, adjuster's manual that's still available. I'm pretty sure it's from Singer. Uh, anyway, the link will show where it's at. And you can get that and it, there's a page in there it shows you how to do the adjustment one thing they don't take into account in the adjusters manual is that you know 60 odd years have probably passed since the last time the uh, the hook was turned on the shaft or the gear that drives the hook was turned on the shaft so it's going to be pretty well seized up in there because again the sewing machine oil dries over time uh, so what I did was I took the uh, two set screws, which I'll put a picture of right here. I took them out and then I threaded a bolt in their place. And I'm using that to actually give me the leverage to turn uh, the hook. Also, uh, I gave it like three or four coats of blaster PB and let that soak in just to dissolve uh, the dried in oil. So, and now if you watch, you can see me, I can actually turn the hook here without moving anything else. So what I'm going to do is very slowly keep backing it up while I turn the uh, needle bar down. And I'll probably speed this up a little bit. Okay. So we have two timing marks here. Uh, see those two little marks you can look in the book and see them and when you're at the bottom of your stroke should be even with the top mark so I'm not there yet and on this one so there I am so now when it comes on the upstroke I want to have him right about the same spot, which is about right there, and that's when I want my hook, which is actually hidden here. I'll take a picture. I want it dead center of the needle and just a little bit above the eye. Okay, that, that little edit you just saw was the, the minute or so I had my head stuck in, in front of you there. So now I just need to put my two set screws back in and snug them down and my timing should be good. Now when you put these set screws back in, you don't want to crank one down and then put the other one in and crank it down. You want to get them both uh, first finger tight and go back snug, 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 snug. And on these, I don't have any torque specifications on them, but usually I go snug and then maybe a sixteenth of a turn past snug. I really don't want to crank them down on them. So I got the timing, I think, set. Uh, the problem is to test it, we got to put the machine back together. So we'll do that, and if the timing's still messed up, got to take the machine back apart on here because... I really don't feel like moving the camera around to show you these screws going in. So. so these two uh, gear cover slash foot plate screws really don't need to be torqued down at all. Just
this is one of the big problem pieces for some reason that uh, people have problems with. Uh, not putting it on, but just turning their bobbin carrier so that it catches in that retaining area. Uh, it's kind of a common thing with all sewing machines that there usually is something that keeps your bobbin carrier from spinning with the hook. Uh, my sister, the 221 I bought her, uh, somebody had done that. And uh, so, yeah, we got it cheap because it was broken. And once again, there's no real pressure on that plate, so putting it in is just finger tight with a uh, little socket screw. I don't know if this works. Okay, so that's moving good. Quiet, too. So your feed dogs are some of the screws that you want a little bit of pressure holding them on because if they back out and get loose, you can have kind of sloppy feed or it'll just stop feeding because the feed dogs don't come up. So we're not going to crank them way down and give them not even a quarter turn past snug. somewhere between an eighth and a quarter turn past snug. Uh, the Chapman Toolkit, uh, well Chapman Manufacturing, their 9600 Toolkit is pretty much close to perfect for working on sewing machines. Uh, back together. The pressure foot is on and uh, whatever I do with the face plate, you just need to put it on and then we'll do some test stitches. Face plate and uh, yeah that's what you get when you get a five or ten dollar 201. Uh, they have lost the uh, Face plate thumb screw. And we're using one off of a uh, button holder. Okay, so <clears throat> everything back together. Uh, you see, I already got the uh, belt guard on. Uh, me and the boy tapped the holes for. Uh, the belt guard screws so right here series of pictures of us working on the drill press uh, to drill this out the biggest issue working on a drill press with this is there's no you know, real flat surface up here that's stable so we kind of had to brace it shim it so we're at 90 degrees because yeah you don't want these screw holes going in at an angle it just make for a mess whenever you try to put the uh, hand hole on it. Uh, the screw holes we tapped to a uh, number 10 with 28 threads per inch and uh, doing that we were able to use the original Singer screws. If you're paying attention to earlier in the video, especially the still shots when I was doing the uh, timing uh, you might have noticed I had the needle in backwards. Uh, I did catch that. So we're now ready to do our first stitches on this guy. So. Oops. A little sloppy on my 
part. Pictures will come up right here. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And look forward to your comments, likes, dislikes, anything you want to say. Check out the blog. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time.